Everyone's trying to reboot everything. Yeah, they're using our ideas to do their own thing. It's so funny also. It's like life is a circle type shit. But, um, you know, yeah, because I know that these are the same conversations my father had with me. It's like, but that, that was our show. Right. And now you got that, like, I can't think of a lot. Of, there's definitely, you know, things from like the 50s and 60s that were just duplicated in our era, too. And now it's totally. happening, you know, right in front of our eyes, too. Okay. For a, a weird uh, example, The Parent Trap. When that came yeah. out with Lindsay Lohan, right. I didn't realize at the time in the early 90s that that was actually a remake. Yeah. Uh, and people were just like, why is this coming out? And I just thought it was great. Right. So the Ghostbusters remake that's going to be coming out, or yep. not remake, but like, I don't know, what is it, uh, that third? No, they're doing, uh, oh yeah, they, they are the same actors. It's the Dan for Aykroyd the, and shit, yeah. For the most part, but this seems yeah. like more of a reboot for kids because right. it's mainly starring kids. That are the grandchildren of these of some of the uh, oh really Ghostbusters? Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, so I think that one is. I'm out be... on that. <laughs> I'm out on that. I I'm love... out on any new Ghostbusters. Well, so, first really. of all, one of my favorite things is um, the fact that so Disney is is literally making all the movies they made when we were kids in the '90s totally into what do you call them? live, live action. action. And yeah, it's but so funny when adults like us, though, like some of our peers will go see that movie and they're like, man, I didn't do it. I like the old one. And I'm like, dude, you're 34. They didn't make that for you. You don't get to say you. Yeah, of course you like the old one. You were nine when you discovered it. You should like the old one. This one's for your nine year old. Have that like <laughs> what's their opinion? Like the fact that like that shit is so ridiculous to me that they're like angry it's like it's the same exact movie it's like yeah but imagine all of the adults now that don't have children that are pissed off about these remakes like myself yeah. oh yeah I, I also King. don't have children exactly too. Yeah. but i i was able to like aladdin I, did you like aladdin dude we watched the first 10 15 minutes i was out by the you second song i actually thought i liked it because my fear was that um, he would try to duplicate the Robin Williams thing, and he and Will Will Smith obviously being the genie, and I thought he made it his own thing in a way that I really actually liked. It was hard for me Saw to it on disconnect. A plane too. It was a good plane movie. <laughs> That's the thing, though. I feel like if you're on a plane, anything is good. Yeah, because I was you're like, just like, I'm trying to get through. It's better this. than the plane. <laughs> yeah, like the plane's pretty boring. Um, That's too funny. I like the Aladdin. Uh -huh. I do understand how people wouldn't though. And I liked the, I actually didn't mind the Lion King, but the Lion King I loved first of all, I loved that they uh they were like, Should we get somebody else for Mufasa? And somebody's like, James Earl Jones is still alive. Yeah. And they're like, Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's just run that Do back. You know how many people let's, forget that though? Let's let's just run that back for sure. And then um what was the other thing? Uh Oh, I didn't like though. You know who pissed me off in that movie? I thought Beyonce was so bland. Thank you. She like thank she you. She didn't ruin it, but she did not elevate it at all. They're, she's they're like, can you read? She's like, yes, <laughs> and you could definitely tell she, she read. has zero like passion as an actress. Considering like I've never seen her live, but I've seen enough documentaries and shit where like she like takes on a new like Sasha Fierce or whatever. Isn't that her nickname? On I guess stage? so. Yeah, that's like her. Uh, alter so on ego. stage, she has like this alter ego of energy. She was not good in that. No. She wasn't bad, though. But All yeah. Right. I also remember a movie she was in with, I think it was Ali Larder and Idris Elba. Oh, she was, uh, uh, it wasn't, he was trying to kill her, right? Uh, Ali, Ali was, was trying to, yeah, it was a thriller. Trying to ruin their relationship or something like that, right? Their marriage. She yeah. wanted him. Yes. Yeah, exactly. It was kind of like Also, that. first of all, yeah, going back to nostalgia, <laughs> movies repeating themselves. I've seen that movie 20 times and I'll watch it 20 times. <laughs> I know exactly what happened. But that's why I am excited about this uh, podcast, this new adventure that I'm, I wanted to go on with other people. Yeah. Is, you know, the I th what do I want to call this? Synopsis? Rebooting your memories one episode at a time. Yeah. Because that's exactly what we're doing. We're just going through and rebooting all the old shit that we loved so much. But not but not in the context of like, um, how should I put this? Of just movies and things like that. Like, yeah. you know, talking about comedy and talking about like even random video games that you got on or yeah. even some like classic bands that have been around forever or things yeah. that you used to love that make you you. The, oh, have huge influences on who you became as a person. Yeah. Absolutely. 100%. The things I dealt with in my teenage years 
were through like some of the things that you're talking about, whether it be movies or music and shit like that. Like, you know, Blink-182, take off your pants and jacket really meant a lot to me discovering uh, my frustration with maybe trying to get girls in high school and shit like that, right? Like that whole pop punk era oh, dude. was me de- not dealing with my internal emotions and listening to Newfound Glory. It came out at just the right time for me. Oh for my me. God, yeah, we that were 15. Enema, Enema of the State. That was 14, yeah. So like literally between like 12 and 16, like when you're really turning into like this, you know, for a guy when your voice is dropping. <laughs> that was when pop punk was at its peak and they were screaming about their emotions. And I was like, fuck yeah, I feel this. Mark, Tom, and Travis. Okay, random, but who do you th- I, who do you think are the hardest, like the toughest and the best out of all three uh, in pop punk world? Green Day, Blink One Eighty Two, or Good Charlotte? Damn, those are because <laughs> I'm like those are these are all very soft bands. I know point. exactly. I I actually will never like really the hardest forgive, of the softest. Uh, Green Day for just going so soft in the later years. Yeah. They just went, I was like, from like Dookie, my memory of like being a seven, eight year old listening to When I Come Around on repeat, like it was like a two and a half minute song. It was a quick, quick song. And I remember just putting it on repeat on a CD-ROM and I discovered a, a this is all very nostalgic right now. I know. Um, See, you're feeling it. Yeah. But um <laughs> Played a video or you know CD ROM game, some shit on a computer game, yeah, like the CD-ROM. earliest earliest shit that I ever remember playing on a computer. And I had Green Day when I come around on repeat. It was from Woodstock '94, their live version. Oh wow! I would play. I swear I had to play it like seventy times in a couple hour period. Like boom, boom, boom. That shit was so fucking good to me. And then like they do that whole. Oh, they're so soft now. Their last like. 10 years of trying to do shit. I'm like, this isn't the band that I wanted at all. Yeah. Uh, I think as soon as American idiot came out, like I understand that was an important album during that time, uh, especially during the Bush Bush administration. Oh, come on. Your favorite. Come on. (laughs) Shout out to Bush. But I was listening. I was listening to little Wayne to get over that. Thank you. I was being lied to about how easy it was to make money. But if you think about it during that time, that's when, you know, music was really controlling a lot of our uh, like the soundtrack of our lives yeah. i was listening to pop punk at that time but then once i got a little bit older like slightly into high school i was heavily into hip-hop uh you know a little wayne i yeah. loved just all of these dance nelly nelly was nelly. my shit nelly that nelly ashante gra- ja rule i bought the country grammar album three times <laughs> Did you really? remember when cds would just break i remember i had it in a cargo park at one day because I just didn't have the case for it. And I sat down and it snapped. And I was like, oh, I'm about to have to buy this again. Uh, I, I think, need to hear EI. Uh, what was your first album that you purchased for yourself? Okay. Yeah. Because that is tough. Because one that I purchased, I remember my dad got me um, the Eagles, Hell Freezes Over. And I was like seven or eight. Now, that's not really for me. That's you putting me on to this band that meant a lot to you <laughs> in your teenagers. Um but uh, also that album slaps. Shout out to the Eagles. <laughs> um, it was probably, I think, I know that like Boys to Men 2 album. I probably album. didn't come out of pocket for that, though. I don't know if I had an allowance at that point. But the I first definitely album you chose, came out of I actively for. chose, I came out of pocket for was probably, um, it might have been, it might have been DMX, uh, Flesh of My Flesh, Blood of My Blood. Ooh. I also remember getting singles, too. P. Diddy uh, <laughs> and Mace and and Biggie. What was that one? Mo Money, Mo, Mo Problems. Mo Money, Mo, Mo Problems. The sing- remember the singles? Oh, and then dude. They had a, and then they had two other tracks that were literally just they were the just beat like or the interlude. Instruments, or instrumental. Instrumentals. And then it had like a remixed version yeah. or, or a radio edit version. Right. And then the original version. Oh, dude, I was hitting up radio stations all the time to get those singles. It's so weird. Oh, I, I remember my first album that I bought was uh, Birthday Money for TLC Crazy Sexy Cool. Yeah. And I got it at Tower Records right off of Alma School in Southern. Ooh, shout out Tower Records. Yeah, dude. I went to Sam Goody, I think, for mine. You were a Sam Goody kid? Well, I was just, yeah, I was at the mall. The Warehouse was the best, though. Uh, Sam Goody Warehouse? Or what was it called? It, it was, was called just called The Warehouse. The warehouse. We did, so I'm Cincinnati. Oh, that's right. It was my right. youth. Yeah, so you're, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So since he was... Uh, Sam Goody, and then there was like other shit. When I got older, it was a place called Everybody's Records on Montgomery Road. Shout out to Everybody's Records. Anybody in Cincinnati listening, that shit is <laughs> probably still amazing. Um, used to get all my shit there, but that was when I like figured out how to really 
do deep dives on like CDs and albums and shit. Mm-hmm. But the first one, yeah, Sam Goody. I need to listen to Boys to Men 2 on repeat. <laughs> I don't know what love is, but these guys seem to be <laughs> onto something. <laughs> the harmonies are making sense. I would listen to uh, radio shows, like late night radio shows, um, not like Art LeBeau. Uh, um, where they would have the slow R and B songs okay. or the classic art like Al Green yeah, or yeah, like yeah. Isley Brothers. Uh my mom listened to that a lot. She was a young mom. She was like seventeen when she had me. Mm. So, you know, I had a massive influence on everything she was listening to. That's Keith Sweat, Jodeci, oh, yeah. uh Luther Vandross, yeah. um, Al Green. Uh, and then eventually I morphed into like TLC, Changing Faces, mm-hmm. Mace. Uh, I will stand by the fact that uh, you just named a lot of R&B artists. 90s R&B, you could argue, is the greatest era of music mm-hmm. ever. I, were, I, it's it was such a special time. Like the like you could dig into like 88, go back to like Bobby Brown, New Jack Swing, all the way to like 96, mm-hmm. 97. That's a good era of music. Mary J. Blige. Oh, God, yeah. Bobby Brown. Fucking New Edition, Boys to Men, Usher, Tevin Campbell, Babyface, Keith Sweat, LSG. Oh, oh God, LSG. 112. Dude, how could I forget about 112? 112 was crazy. Like, all that shit. All the bad boy stuff. And then you had all those female groups, SWV, TLC. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I will Shout say to this. Oh, yeah. Oh, God. I can't wait for her album to, or all of her discography to come out for a streaming service. Oh, uh, no. Yeah. They're working on it, which is really exciting for me because I love Aaliyah. Yeah. Yeah. I was devastated when she died. She was my first crush. Really? Yeah. I oh. remember really being obsessed with uh Oh, she was gorgeous. Four page letter. Oh, my God. That was a great song. <laughs> <laughs> that album, One in a Million? Yeah. <sighs> Hot. Perfect album. I really think I. I God, I think I have that. I think I still have it somewhere. Um, but, you know, I feel like there are not a lot of people that I know that grew up listening to a lot of the same music that I did. Yeah. I think a lot of my friends are, it, they were grew up differently and they yeah. didn't grow up with a lot of like hip hop or R&B influences. What was so, it out here? It was like rock? Um, yeah, this, or... I would say it was more pop yeah a lot of my friends are very like into pop or yeah. uh they liked uh christian music or oh, really? rock yeah um when i was in junior high that's when i started getting more of the rock influence in my life yeah, yeah. uh so yeah i always find it i love talking music with you yeah yeah because you know i don't know anyone else that vibes with me on it like you do since he was a good place to grow up too because it was a good mix of that too. You definitely had a lot of people like country music in mm-hmm. Ohio, right? Like Cincinnati's a city, but it's in Ohio. It's still mm-hmm. funk country shit. Uh, but you definitely had the good urban culture, like with a lot of, um, you know, the hip hop stuff and the R and B shit like that. And so it was a good mix of, uh, stuff. I was exposed to a lot of different shit and still the, you still had the suburban white kids that when pop punk pop, we all were like, fuck yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so it was a good mix. Yeah, and we have we're it's funny that you were raised by a young mother. My mom was almost 40 when I was born and my dad was 43. So that my I got all my shit from uh my older brother I had two brother 2 years older than me and then my sister um she would put us on a shit like Backstreet Boys and NSYNC. Mm-hmm. I was early on Backstreet Boys. Oh. Um were you a Backstreet Boy or was, an NSYNC fan? Which I one would, were you? If I ch- if I chose it would be Backstreet Boys. <laughs> But yeah, shout we're out, gonna hey. have to end this early. Hey, that's a cohesive group that had bigger hits. I want it that way as a timeless song. It might be a perfect song that nobody knows exactly what they're even talking about on the song. <laughs> <laughs> if you, have you ever broken down those lyrics, people like that. Actually, that song makes zero sense. Uh, what way do you want it? I want it that way. Tell me why. Ain't nothing but a heartache. Tell me why. Ain't nothing but a mistake. So, like, if you go through that song, it's like, are you? Do you want this girl? Do you want to break up with this girl? Are you guys ending this or beginning this? <laughs> He's He wants it some type yeah. of way. But my sister and brother gave me a lot of the shit that I, I listened to. Mm-hmm. Um, and my parents were more like, you know, it was like my dad was 43. So it was like Beach Boys and like uh, the old shit. So mm-hmm. I got that too, which was good. Yeah. Eagles. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I think my dad tried to influence a lot of country on me growing up. So very we early on, I was very uh, into Tim McGraw, Don't Take the Girl. That was the first karaoke song I sang. I was like six. Nah. 
I mean, in in the ni- uh, the one opinion I do have on country music is that the '90s country music was like the last era that it was just beautiful, and now it's like, I think country music is aged more into the shame that they used to throw on hip hop, womanizing people, and like throwing like money around and being reckless with cars and and women and shit like that. That's actually pop country now oh. is like doing that more than. Or just as much as hip hop did when hip hop was bad in like the early two thousands during the Bush era. That's when fascinating because I I have not listened to a legit solid country album any time past Tim McGraw they're and out, Nelly. They're <laughs> out there, but like the pop, the people that are like really popular in mm-hmm. country music is pretty trash. Ugh. But like you still got your. I'm trying to even think. I don't even know the people's names anymore. There's a Eric Chris Church. I know is big. Chris Stapleton. Um, the Zach Brown band. I like the Zach Brown band. I've not checked them the out yet, part. but I want to. They got some good shit. Like ten years ago, that has good albums. You know, another thing that I love vibing with you on is because you're in the scene of it is just comedy. You know, yeah. Uh, I grew up just watching a bunch of comedy. Just comedy, everything. It was all about laughing. Laughter is one of the number one things in my life yeah. that I need to just feel like I'm alive. Do you know <laughs> yeah. what I mean? <laughs> release. Yeah. Release. It's the only thing that makes me feel better. Yeah. People can go for runs and people can like listen to their like heavy metal albums. Yeah. But if I have a good stand up comedy yeah. that I could watch, it's like you run a 5k. I'm going to watch Eddie mood. Murphy raw. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I do. Uh, who, did you grow up influenced by in comedy uh so that was like that was a lot influenced by my dad because interesting me and you know your siblings you're learning humor i think more so through the household vision of what humor is whether it be your mom's perspective on what's funny your dad's perspective on what's funny yeah that's usually your definition of humor is a lot of family families are typically pretty funny mm. you, you you typically <laughs> don't find a dude that or a girl that's like super hilarious and then they got the strangest family so our family was really funny so my mom and dad um my dad specifically would put us on to like a lot of like old shit like he liked peter sellers and like pink panther and shit like that okay and like um but he loved george carlin was like an early one they put me on too so carlin was like um he loved Carlin, and we would get like I remember I one of the CDs he definitely chose for me was a uh, Carlin album. Uh-huh. Uh, we had a book Carlin wrote a lot of books, so we would read those like on a rain delay for a baseball game. We would be just reading George Carlin jokes like in the in the car. So oh, that's awesome. Yeah, so Carlin was probably the biggest early, inf- and I'm talking like nine, ten years old, and Carlin's like a very adult vision of humor uh in the in the subject matter that he typically goes on he's the kind of comedian that prepares you for the real world yeah and that's why and i didn't discover carlin until probably like my mid to late 20s oh really Um, that's probably a good time to do it and also he (laughs) will he will also make a beautiful fart joke too like (laughs) he'll like talk about like politics and religion for like 20 minutes and then make the funniest fart joke you've ever heard in your life so (laughs) you you know I feel like I grew up around a lot of funny people in my life. Like my uncle Randy was really funny. Yeah. And then when I got older and my mom remarried, I had some stepbrothers that were fucking hilarious. Yeah. JD and Frankie were, uh, they were just like Bert and Ernie for some reason. Yeah. But I don't know if they like take baths together or anything. <laughs> you, but... know, you gotta hope. That, well, you know what? Hopefully not still, but back in the day, shout out to, <laughs> shout out to baths with people. Shout out to having pictures of like, <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of nostalgia, just the comfort level of taking a like an actual photo and having you and like two neighbors naked in the bathtub <laughs> yeah, right. as a three year old. I feel like everybody got that picture somewhere. You can't, it's like, do, what the fuck? you can't do that now. You can't have that on the IG. <laughs> no, three naked four year olds. Like, what the fuck is this? You can, but then it's like this whole like Wiccan mother, like, you know, group that co parents right, all right, the right. kids and stuff. I've seen it. I've seen it. Is it on IG? Like that's legit real. There are people that like do, um, as if they were their own tribe, in a way. Like they take care of their own kids, but like they all do things together. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Does that make sense? Cohesive parenting through. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's very fascinating. I'm out on that hard pass. <laughs> you know, my dad actually turned me on to. Uh, in living color very early. Oh yeah. And that I was watched a, that. that was a huge influence on my life and specifically 
Jim Carrey. Yeah. I was talking to Ray about this earlier today. Like, Jim Carrey has to be one of the number one reason why I wanted to be funny. Yeah. And Robin Williams, but... but... Yeah, Robin Williams is... Yeah. We'll get they're, to that they're the same. Later. They're the same level to me of... Uh, I always uh, think of them in a way where there's multiple movies that were made in their era by Robin Williams and Jim Carrey that literally aren't even movies without their existence. Oh, absolutely. As people. Like, Robin Williams... I don't think Aladdin is as good if Robin Williams isn't Aladdin. The way that he yeah. did Aladdin, that genie is like, it's literally just his personality turning into a cartoon. But it was almost like, put him in front of a microphone, let him fucking say what the fuck he wants to say. We'll just draw what he says. Most of the time, it's just improv for both of them. Yeah, uh, yeah. From what I've read and what I've you know heard, uh, which is really cool. Like, who else could do the mask? I Who mean, else could Jamie have done Kennedy the mask? tried. And, and, I, and, I, didn't, Jamie Kennedy. and I didn't watch it because no, it I'm wasn't. No, I'm not going to ruin the first one. Yeah, yeah I can't do that. Uh, you know, what was it? The other day we were talking on Instagram. We're just DM- DMing each other about comedy uh, yeah. sequels. Yeah, yeah. And I think... Well, because you posted about uh, When Nature Calls. Yeah. Oh, and my God. You know, it was my funny. favorite. I was at a bar last night. Shout out to bars being open in Arizona right That's now. scary. Yeah. We'll talk about that yeah, too yeah. in a minute. Uh, oh, my God. Uh, masked up, but um, uh, they were playing it, and I was like, "What? That's so weird." You know, so it's always so weird when you say something. That's a random ass movie to have talked about and then seen on the screen. Oh yeah. Um, and yeah, they're just playing. It. I forget what it was on, but I was like, "Oh shit!" And it was funny, even on mute. You, oh, <laughs> absolutely. It's especially, actually it might be funnier on mute. When you're especially like, the rhino scene. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Ray, perfect, can you pull that up real quick? Perfect comedy. <laughs> um. That, I, I would have to say, I think that is the, officially the only sequel that Jim Carrey has ever done. Uh, well, no, Dumber and Dumber. But that was not a sequel. That was the third, wasn't it? Oh, wow. That's interesting. To, but, I don't know. Or was, no. I don't know how they would. But wasn't Dumb and Dumber, okay, no, maybe it was, because Dumb and Dumber, wasn't that the. It was like a prequel. Yeah. It was them it when was they were younger. Prequel. Yeah, God, yeah. Dang. So, yeah. Ugh. But, um... But still, just two? Two sequels? A yeah. comedy sequels? I'm trying to think. Yeah, because he didn't do Mask 2. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Did he do anything? He might have done, uh... Didn't he do a, um... Animated movies or no? No, I guess he's not in a lot of those. I don't think I've ever seen him do an an- but a voice when for animated calls, I love that Ace Ventura deserved a sequel, though. They were like, let's do this again. Yeah, if they did a third one, I wouldn't... I don't think I would watch it i don't know maybe i love everything he does i think he's fantastic i just uh like even that new that series that he came out with kidding on I heard showtime it's good. i haven't watched it it's uh it's, it's kind of heavy huh it's very heavy yeah and that's the sometimes thing sometimes i don't have i'm like i don't know if i'm ready to do a but that's heavy the, movie or show right now that's the beauty of jim carrey and robin williams is they can be hilarious very lighthearted, but they there's also a lot of heaviness in Google their heart hunting and like all that yeah robin williams is one of the better actors of all time and it was just and most of his roles were serious movies he at least was like 50 50 on dramatic roles versus comedy roles yeah, it's true. Um, and, and in my opinion, Flubber was a drama. Um, <laughs> I just recently <laughs> watched that for the first time. Oh, really? You know what? I haven't seen it since, like, back in the day. I just remember that goo really got a lot of shit done. It was so unbelievable because it was like, Robin Williams missed his wedding for the third time. And yeah. I was like, what the hell is wrong with this? Uh, was he a this? scientist? Is that what it was? He was a scientist. And he just, he, he made just, that thing. He was too busy working on his projects and to get married to this woman. I like that. Um, I, I mean, like, oh, 90s that... storylines were like, they were like, all right, we want to make a movie about Robin Williams and this goo. And they were like, well, how do we get to the goo? It's like, I don't know. So we, <laughs> like, why don't we just say he missed his third marriage and blah, blah, blah. Like the first 20 minutes of a 90s movie is like, the craziest shit ever that would never happen. <laughs> oh my god! Uh, you know what? I also grew up on a lot of uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger movies. I was like, "Hey, Arnold, okay." No, no. Um, Arnold Schwarzenegger was big. Yeah, I mean, True Lies was very See, good. You, 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 every time I talk to you, you always go back to True Lies. I love Why True, True Lies? It's a good action movie, and it's got everything. It's got Jamie Lee Curtis and a bra and panties, so that's exciting. As a Young man, and then you got Arnold just doing this shit. I think they blow up a bridge. Like, 
They're in a helicopter at some point. It's insane. Uh, see, I still Bill think... Paxton. Oh, I do love Bill, Bill Paxton. Bill Paxton elevates every he actor. He really is. But I mean, Terminator 2. That's an underrated actor right there, Bill oh, Paxton. Bill, Bill, I've been... I saw him... Because uh, he was in... I was just watched... What the fuck is that country movie? Uh, Tombstone. I was just watching him. Oh, I was like, oh, yeah. yeah. He and he was in Terminator 1. That was like one of his early roles. That's right. He was like an extra dude in the beginning. Very beginning. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, who else was He's in like that one? Yeah. Um, I don't. I didn't notice the other two guys, but um, he was in that. He was in Aliens. Ah, uh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah he was like blue a, hair, the spikiness. Yeah. That's right. And he somehow didn't die. I don't think he got killed. I can't remember. It's been so long since I've watched that. Um, Good classic little uh, sci-fi movie. T two scared the crap out of me as a kid. That was. That's a great movie. That's like a. Per, like the quintessential sci-fi action movie. I think I saw it at the drive-ins uh, with my aunt and I fell asleep and I woke up right around the time when Linda Car not Linda Carter, uh, Linda, Linda Hamilton. Hamilton yeah. She was, ha- she was looking at the Sarah playground, Connor. Sarah Connor. Yeah. She's looking at the playground and then I guess the apocalypse happened and all that ball of fire came at her. Oh yeah. That, that's a little creepy. When I kid. wake up and that's the first thing I saw. <laughs> yeah. Ruined me. I, <laughs> from that day on, I was, I was praying to God and I was hoping that he would save us from the apocalypse. And then I was praying to God for like no aliens to land for some right. reason. But if they do land, hopefully Arnold Schwarzenegger also lands <laughs> and he's on, he's got my interest at heart. No, no, no. Will Smith will take care of that. Problem, <laughs> yeah, okay? yeah, right. He is legend. Uh, you know, I got to say kindergarten cop was probably the number one. Oh yeah. Number kindergarten one cop was big for sure. Yeah. I liked that. Um, I was I used to watch Beverly Hills Cop. Speaking of cops, mm-hmm. I was a big uh, Eddie Murphy guy. Or not? I, I don't. I guess I wasn't even. I think everybody was a big Eddie Murphy guy. But uh, Beverly Hills Cop, I've probably watched like a hundred sometimes. I th- I watched the third one a lot because it had. Uh, I did too. It was on like HBO a lot. I feel like uh, too. Or maybe. I, you know what I loved about it though that it was Universal Studios. Yeah. And every time, and I loved going to Universal Studios. So that I could ride those rides, like the, uh, it wasn't the avalanche one, it was earthquake. Okay. You go in the tunnel, yeah, yeah, yeah. and then like everything blows up inside around you. Mm-hmm. I was just completely intrigued that all of this could be around you, and you're still okay. Mm-hmm. That I just thought that was so fascinating, and that's how I just fell in love with movies and how they're made. And oh yeah, oh god, it was so great. Yeah, movies were great. Movies in the '90s were. It was a good era for film, and the movies were so big. It felt like everything was so big. It's weird seeing the transition into like every movie's gonna end up on Netflix. Back then, it was like I need to see this shit in theaters because of the magnitude of it. That di- you telling me that's, that's a T Rex right there, <laughs> dude? Seeing Jurassic Park on on a massive screen that's crazy. It was a little mind blowing. It was nutty. I remember after that movie, we went home. My sister hid behind my brother in my door for like <laughs> no lie, like one or two hours. Popped out and did the Velociraptor, and my brother got so scared he cried. <laughs> <laughs> and that was big. He cried as a nine-year-old, and um, it was a tough look for him. But but we had just seen it. That was a ter- that was like a lot of stuff going on in that movie. Oh my god! I don't think any movie has ever scared me directly like that. Uh, like um, it's not a '90s movie. Paranormal Activity when it first came oh out. Oh my god! That was the only and movie Blair that- Witch. Blair Witch. I think I watched it when I knew that was actually a terrifying movie though. Um, but remember that week where you didn't know if it was real or not. I thought I think the I saw week? It. because I felt like I wasn't sure if it was real or not for a few months. Really? No. I, well, I remember that it was like a news thing and it came. It was so big when it came out that it was like popping. But it was also early Internet. Uh, it was probably it was super early Internet. And I remember getting wind that it wasn't actually real because the assumption was that it was found footage, kind of like paranormal activity. Right. Right. That was a genius idea. Yeah, I watched it just before we were all going to go camping as a family. You did? Oh, mistake, what dude. What the fuck? That's so a, I watched movies. When she's standing in the corner? Dude. What the fuck? Dude. And the then thing, it ends. Isn't that the, the last the thing? That's, so sometimes I'd walk into the house and my stepbrothers, again, they're funny. So what they would do is they would just try to do things to scare the crap out of us. And one of them was standing in the in a corner, like all like the that? lights shut off. We walk in like after like... I don't know, coming home super late. Yeah. And they're just standing in the corner in our bedrooms like that, just waiting for us. I'm like, fuck that. I yeah. just book out of the house. Oh, yeah. 
<laughs> that shit was scary. And paranormal, I didn't know. The girl I was dating at the time, we were just... we Remember those Thursday late night shows at Tempe Marketplace? They would always do a midnight showing on Thursday before the movie came out on Friday. Oh, I miss remember those that? So I used to do that all the time. We would just go every Thursday because we worked in a restaurant. We would get off at 10 or 11 and then we'd just book it down there. And typically it was like whatever movie was at. I was like, you know, just let's go see a movie. And, uh, and then I saw this big line. And mm-hmm. I was like, what the fuck is this movie? And they were like, paranormal, blah, blah, blah. And that, so that I'd never heard of it, anything. And mm-hmm. she was, she liked scary movies. I was like, whatever. I usually don't fuck with these things. And I went that night not knowing anything about it. Yeah. That shit. I could, I like, I was an adult. You know, we were probably what? 22 or something when that came out. Yeah. This is early over 20s. 10 years, over 10 years old. I'm th- we're 34 now. So yeah. Yeah. Like- yeah. It was like my early twenties. I was like, not cool with sleeping. <laughs> A, a, like i was like looking at my closet like is that door moving like that shit was unsettling that fucking movie when the fucking timer would go really fast and then it would slow down and you're like and you knew shit was coming up oh, I, like, I, hated yeah, that. I hated that dude those movies were i made my terrifying. friend kim uh stay the night at my house yeah because i was afraid that i was gonna wake up and somebody was standing up but then i couldn't sleep because she was there and i thought she was gonna fuck with me oh no so i just didn't sleep at all that night for the for a few nights actually yeah ruined me and then when i found out it's like okay it's not real but still it messes no that should have fucked you up that first one i heard the second i think i saw the second one actually I heard they were like all kind of good though. Like even into the fourth, fifth, like they were still pretty good movies. But you know, you kind of lose your luster after the first one. The last, you know, the trick. The last one I think I saw was when there was these two younger girls in it. Was it the Spanish? It may one? have been the third one. Okay, I, I saw that I the saw second the one was uh, one. second one was still pretty freaky. But I was like, yeah, because it was like involved her sister or something like that. Yeah, it was right? like connected. To yeah, the first one. Yeah, in a weird way. Um, yeah, those scary movies, man. Those fuck me up. <laughs> that I mean, the nostalgic shit of like, uh, you know, the, when your parents show you the Halloween for the first time. I remember my mom put me on to, um, we went to some movie, and I remember talking about like how this movie was really scary, and she was like, "You think that shit's scary? Go watch the Omen." The OG Omen, yeah. like from the seventies, I think it is. She's like, if you think that's scary, watch this. And it was just this movie that scared her back when she was watching it. That movie fucked me up because it's like there's something about the old movies or any movie where like the enemy is the devil is pretty fucked up to me. Cause I still don't I haven't wrapped my head around demonic shit yet. I can't figure right. it out. Like most things I can easily rule out like that's not real. That's not real. But I'm still a little shaky on the devil's existence. I it's, don't know. It's strange because, uh, you know, Terrifying devil shit. movies are more like psychological thrillers, in my opinion. Yeah. You know, because they're trying Some to. Something has to do with your belief system and is the devil real? Right. Well, I never really. Those didn't scare me. What scared me in horror movies was things that were my size. Oh, Chucky. No, Chucky was fucked up. Dude. But also, I'd have kicked the fuck out of that thing. See, like, he got a knife, that. but he's going to get your shin on the swipe. But if you could cook, kick <laughs> him, <laughs> if you could kick him long enough and then get a bat, like, if you get a bat, I think you're good, or a shovel. Yeah, but he comes back alive. I mean, come on, his blood he got does, be- mixed back into the into the yeah. bat vat of whatever it was. Right. Um, he, Chucky, he found her, he had a good relationship with that chick. The Bride of Chucky. Meanwhile, oh, peop- that was like my that was my favorite. Meanwhile, though. there's people out there swiping on Tinder right now. Like I can't find anybody. <laughs> Chucky locked some chick down. <laughs> if you can't lock anybody With down, Je- right. that was the first movie Jennifer I think I saw Tilly. Jennifer Tilly. In. Yeah. Um. And and I think that's when I realized, like, I think I like girls. <laughs> ah, that's funny. She was sexy. Yeah, it was her voice. I think yeah, it was she, her voice and yeah. the way that they propped her boobs up. She was also in a Jim Carrey movie, Liar Liar. She was the oh, uh, she, was. she was the defendant. She was that he was defending in the uh, and he she tried to make a move on him that one time. God, what other movies was, was movie. Jennifer Tilly in? She was in like a bunch of like uh, I remember her being in like a Tales from the Crypt. Um, it, shit. It's funny that you wrap your you said Tales from the Crypt because that was the other one that scared the crap out of me. Yeah, that dude terrified the little, me. That little dude popping the out of the keeper? coffin. Oh, I used to have a bed window. A bedroom window 
um, that just looked out and I would look at it at some point and I just like envision that dude popping up in the window. That would terrify me. I couldn't sleep. <laughs> he was a creepy little motherfucker. He was. He was pretty funny actually too. Well, that's what a lot of people said. They're like, oh, it's funny. I'm like, no, he just looked terrifying. Mm-hmm. And, you know, for the longest time, I could not go into a blockbuster or any movie rental place Why? because I was afraid that they were going to pop out of the movie and come and get me. <laughs> oh, I no. legit remember <laughs> hiding my mom and my dad when they would go to get movies. Uh, I would hide in the back seat and I would scream and I would kick and I was like, don't make me go in there. Don't make me go in there. And I would, <laughs> I would hide behind the driver's seat in the little patch where your feet would go. Okay. So that no one would see me because I was afraid. I was <laughs> shaking. I would have nightmares. It was just the worst. Yeah. yeah. I was very dramatic as yeah, a child. Yeah, sounds like it. You were in the drama section of the blockbuster. I might be a little dramatic still, but not yeah, as bad. Good lord. <laughs> Is everything good at home? <laughs> uh, Mommy and Daddy were fighting a yeah, lot. Yeah, right? <laughs> That's funny. The first of all, Blockbuster in general, just that the act of that renting a movie process is so funny that that's like going to be that's so historic to it's uh, obsolete. It's now. like, yeah, you'll never see that again. And it was such a big part of our lives. It was oh, like, yeah. I mean, it was like big to like renting a game. I remember getting a game for like five days and just like crushing <sighs> Twisted Metal or whatever on PlayStation Dude. and then having to bring it back. And you're like, I don't want to bring it back. <laughs> yeah. I You're like, oh, I got to rent this again. Yeah, you got to double that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got to go back and get it again. <laughs> um, I was always waiting by the new, uh, the return section, right? That little slot. Uh-huh. You'd see the movies pop in. Yeah. And you're looking at it. <laughs> and I'm waiting for something to come in that was a new release. And I would ask the front person uh-huh. to go and get it. I'm like, hey, scan that in so it's Saw here and give this back to me because yeah. I would love to watch this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. God, I miss those days. But at the same time, it's all about convenience now. Yeah. Because you know how excited I was when Netflix came out? I'm like, I could just, I don't have to go anywhere to do Were this. Were you early on the Netflix, uh, like with the hard discs I was getting, they used to send and shit? I was shit? getting hard DVDs. Hard, that's a hard DVD. Hard DVD. I know a person that still gets those, actually. Did it's you, it's they, smart. Because there's certain shit on Netflix that you can't, that isn't on Netflix to stream. Mm-hmm. I don't know if they're still doing it, but you can still get DVDs sent to you. Like smaller movies sometimes, but I think the way that it's going now, like you can you can stream anything. It's gonna be on some Amazon. Platform. Like if you you can get it on Amazon. Yeah. Which well, is, if you can't get it on a platform for free that you already pay for, you're gonna be able to rent it for two ninety nine or whatever on. Amazon. And if I can't find it on there, I'm going to Zia. Z- yeah, shout hey, Zia. Okay. Z is good. It is. I like Zia. Oh man. Hopefully they're holding on right now. <laughs> um. Well. I don't really don't know how to end this, to be honest with you. I feel like there's so much to talk about, but at the same time, there's really not, is there? <laughs> I mean, there's always the thing with nostalgia is your memories. I mean, you can sit back and talk about the eighties and nineties for forever. I love that shit. Oh, it's absolutely. always got a soft spot for me. I think there's a, something to be said for, I think Chris Rock said this, that you always have a soft spot for whatever you were doing when you lost your virginity. So anything that anything from like I don't even want to remember that because it was fucking horrible. Right, but like if when you when you lost your virginity and you liked hip hop, you're always gonna like that hip hop. You're gonna like that shit that you look back on and you were like in a happy moment in your life. So I'll always love hip hop. I always like Jim Carrey movies. I always like Robin Williams movies. And I always have my version of a Disney movie that's better than your whack ass version <laughs> with Beyonce as Nala. Oh my god. Let's just promise that we don't do that again. Yeah. <laughs> well, Mike, I appreciate you uh, joining me. I, where can people find you if they need to find you? Hit me up uh, on the social media. Turner Comedy um, is the handle on IG. And then, um, yeah, just look me up on there. I usually posting little jokes, little skits, or whatever I'm working on or whatever shows are coming up. So that's a good good place to follow. He's usually shirtless. You're, you're trying to be like the new Burt Kreischer. Sh- I'm Kreis- running shirtless. Oh, I'm God, usually... his name. Yeah. Kreischer. <laughs> yeah, I'm the Kreischer of uh, yeah, I'm the new Kreischer. <laughs> a little skinny. I'm probably like you're a Cincinnati two hundred pounds less than that. But yeah, I mean, <laughs> shout out to Bert. Less body hair too. I might be an upgrade. <laughs> oh my god, that's so funny. Um, well, Mike, I'm looking forward to seeing what you got tonight on Don't Tell Tom Comedy. So yeah, for sure, that's gonna be exciting. I'm excited. Well, thanks, dude. I appreciate it. Appreciate y'all. Yeah.